Hello, I'm Safira Lou and welcome to my channel. Hello guys and welcome to this month's Arts Tips video. This video series is a new series I want to try out um, to basically show you how you can get the best out of art equipment without having to spend the earth. Now the, the technique I'm going to show you this time is actually painting with highlighters. If you don't have an awful lot of money and you just want to do some nice art which is nice and colourful, you can actually end up painting with your highlighters. So how does this technique work? All you need is a plastic lid, maybe, or a paint palette. I chose to use a plastic lid because it was the cheapest and easiest equipment that I could find. Um, paintbrush and your highlighters and a little bit of water. Now because highlighters are water based, by actually treating them like watercolours, you're able to build up layers through this technique. Now if you're trying to use highlighters normally, you may notice that it is very difficult to actually build up layers. So this technique will give you more colours and more range out of your highlighters than you would have any in any way, shape or form previously. So this technique works by you putting the marker as, as a light layer onto the palette that you're of your choosing get a little bit of water and mix in with the colour. You may not get the cleanest lines, but because these act like watercolours, you're able to get more colours and more of a smoother, and even though it's still bright, it's not as bright as what the highlighter normally would be. This is a fantastic way of practicing your techniques before you get any more say if you want to try watercolors but you've never tried them before this is a fantastic technique to almost try them before you buy them watercolors as you know can be quite expensive now in case you're wondering what i'm using here is i'm using a watercolor pad this watercolor pad i got with an art and parcel uh, which was an old um, art subscription box which unfortunately they no longer do um and it was a nice pad that I don't really use but I thought I would use for practice in techniques and this was perfect for this. Um, so ideally you would want a watercolour pad just so sometimes when you have to put down quite a bit of water it isn't going to affect the paper as much and it isn't going to warp as much. That will possibly be the most expensive part of this whole endeavour um, if you wish to try it out. However. This technique is absolutely fantastic. It means that you're able to build up more layers and try something that you may not actually have done before. The only problem is with this technique is sometimes the lines may not come as clear as concise and as well, um, once you've put the colour down, it is very difficult to bring up that colour. Watercolours are a very forgiving medium in the fact that if you make a mistake, you can almost rectify it um, by by using a bit of water and taking that off the paper. However, with this technique, it doesn't really work because once it's on the paper, it's kind of stuck onto the paper. In theory, this could actually work with any water-based markers because the clue's in the name, it's water-based. All you'd have to do is build it up on a watercolour palette or a an actual, like as I've done, a piece of plastic and you'd be able to use, uh, if you put the colour onto there and then build up the layers through there, you'll be able to actually use this technique and possibly have a lot of fun with it. If you guys do actually want to try this out, please make sure to show me, I'd be interested in what you do. You can tag me on Instagram or on my Twitter, my handle is always Sathiralu, and just show me what you've been able to build with this technique. This is also another fantastic way of being able to approach the highlighter challenge, uh, where you just use highlighters to produce an illustration. Highlighters are such a fantastic commodity because they are beautiful, they're bright, and they're really colourful. But my problem I've always had with it was I could never build up the layers I wanted, so this technique is perfect for me. So why doesn't this work with alcohol-based markers? Well, the clue is yet again in the name. It's an alcohol-based marker. Once the marker is onto the paper or onto the palette, it's very difficult to lift this up with water. This is why during my mixed media techniques, you'll see me using alcohol based markers with watercolours because it's easy for me to be able to build up the technique through that. Because once they're on the paper, they're on the paper, there is no shifting them. 
However, if you were to try and use watercolours with water-based markers, yet again, the clue is in the name, you will struggle. But if you were to try this technique, it would be much easier for you to be able to lay down colour. And for markers such as highlighters and for the Crayola markers or cheaper markers that you may get a hold of, um, you may find that as you struggle to get layers, this technique may be much better for you. So what do you guys think of this technique? Would you use this in your art book? I know I've tried a few pieces like this in my art book and I've really enjoyed using them. Because it doesn't make the highlighters as harsh, it is nicer to be able to build up a softer feel for the illustration, which is what I've done here. It it's means I've been able to keep the nice bright colours, but at the same time, I've been able to build a much softer illustration and I have a lot more control over what I'm doing. And that's fantastic because I like control. I don't know about you guys, but I like being able to control what my drawing is coming out like. And by control, I basically mean I like to be able to build up the colours the way I want without having to compromise for the equipment that's there. Now you can see what I'm doing is I can build the layers up on top with the highlighters after their paper has dry, which is absolutely fantastic because if you wanted that stronger look without having to compromise, you can certainly do that and able to build up your layers through this technique. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tip. Um, if you guys have any tips that you would like me to share please let me know in the comments down below and if you like series of videos like this where I share sort of techniques where you don't have to break the bank to be able to do um, art let me know in the comments down below cheap supply challenges or cheaper art supply challenges are fantastic for a way for you to learn without having to break the bank and a lot of these techniques I actually do apply in my sketchbooks because it's a way for me to think of how I'm going to build a bigger piece without having to spend the bank or break out my more expensive colours or my more expensive markers to be able to do the piece that I want to do. If you guys want to, I can actually show you how this technique would work with Crayola or if you want to, I can show you different techniques on with different equipment. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts and I'm always interested to see what you guys think. As you can see, I'm showing you here that even when you put the laser marker down, you can put water down afterwards, but the problem being is that the colour won't run as much as you want to. So your best technique would be to do this method where you put it onto your lid and build up the layers through there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Maybe like, comment and subscribe if you want to. Let me know in the comments down below whether or not you'd like to try this technique and what you would do this technique and how you would apply it to your work. So painting with highlighters, who knew? It's always interesting to find out new techniques for your art. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope you have an amazing day and as always, stay creative.